Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Raky Bian from my city. Now I will talk about the application of cross elasticity. So, first thing first, what is cross elasticity? Cross elasticity is basically how to find the elasticity or the and the relationship between the two items. The uh, how to see if there's going to be cross elasticity? There's going to be two different equation that can be there derived partially. So for example like there's this the first is key A equal there is need to be to F B A and B B. Uh, the equation need to have the P A and B B because if uh, we don't have these two it could not be called as the differential partial because we need to use this to find the cross elasticity, and uh, and then there's need to be the second one, which is going to be QB equal to PA and PB. It's going to be uh, the KA and QB need to have the same symbol. Like if if KA have PA and PB, the QB should be have PA and PB as well. After this, we need to find the differential partial of both of them, all of them. So the first one is Ka. So we're gonna derive it. The first is using do. Okay, uh, this need to be not. This should be use do, not d, because it's different. So do Ka per do Pa. Uh, and then the second one is we need to find still use still in the Ka because there's gonna be two for for each question. The first one is do ki a for do pi a, and the second one is do ki a. Yes, the top is going to be the same, it's going to be ki a, and the bottom one is going to be do pi b. And then the second one is we need to find the derivative of the ki b. So it's going to be, it's going to be similar like ki a, but instead of do ki a, we're going to be do ki b. So do ki b per do b a and do ki b per do p b it's gonna be like this and then after we find all of these four we're gonna put them into the equation so the first equation that we're gonna use is the lss demand of each now cross so we're gonna find the each it's elasticity of Ka and Gb, first one. So how to find the elasticity of Ka? We're gonna put it in. So what you're gonna do is gonna in, uh, put the equation is Pa per Ka times the Ka per the Pa. We're gonna uh, put the first one in here and to find the elasticity of Gb. We're gonna put it on no B equal no B equal B B per K B times do K B per do B B. This is this two right here is to find the elasticity of speech. And then the second one, how to find the cross elasticity. How to find cross elasticity is we need to use the less. Uh, we have just this one, we have this one. Now we gonna use this and this. How to put it is we gonna put in like this. No a b equal b b per k a times do k a per do b b, which is this one. And then the second one, we also need to find the BA, which is the different from it. So it's going to be like this, but it's going to be the other way, which is going to be BA per key B times do key B per do B A. And then after we form these two, we need to identify if the if and A B and and B A less than zero. It is a uh, complementer. And if null A B and null B A is more than zero, it's gonna be saling menggantikan. Okay, now 
let's move to the uh, the example. Okay, now let's put it into the in, into an exercise. So the first we have PA equal to PA square times PB cubic, and then the second one is QB equal to PA pangkat lima and PB power by four. So the first thing first we're gonna derive all of them. Um, we're gonna find the do QA per per do. P A and do do K A per do P B and then we're gonna also find from this do K B per do P A and do K B per do P A. Okay, let's start with this. So. The K A is equal uh, equal to P A power by two and P B power by three. So the first thing first we're gonna do the first find the first derivative of this because we're gonna uh, find the do P A. So we're gonna derive only the P A. We will not derive the P B. So since it's P A, so this equal to two P A times P B power by three. And then this one is gonna be three p a power by two and p b power by two. This is the first derivative for this one and then this one. Okay. Then we're gonna find the first derivative of k b and do k b per do p a, which so we're gonna derive the only p a from the k b. So. The first derivative of this is gonna be five p a power by four times p b power by four, and then for this one, it's only gonna be the p b like the first one. So it's gonna be four p a power by five times p b power by four. This is the all the derivative from both K A and K B. Okay, the next step. Okay, the next step is to find the elasticity. Uh, after finding the derivative of this, now we can find the elasticity of its first. This is the A. So, uh, to find the elasticity of wood, like we have, uh, like I have told you before, we are gonna use this one and this one. We are only gonna use this two for. Point A, which is gonna find the state of the squares. Uh, the way we're gonna find it is gonna use normal A equal P A per per K A, K, which is P A power by two P B power by three times uh, times one. So times two P A P B power by three. After we this, we just gonna uh, the PA on top of this is gonna be the the turning to sini, uh, turning to PA power by two. So it uh, it's gonna be uh, since this uh, goes to here, so it's gonna lose right here. PA right here, PA is gonna can be caused by this because this PA this is PA this PB power by three, this PB power by three, cross this, cross this, so. Uh, no a is equal to two. Now to find two, uh, the no b is gonna be the same like no a. To find it, uh, no a equal to p b per q b. Q b is p a power by five and p b power by four times times this p a four times p a. Power by four and PB power by three. So we're gonna put in here. It's gonna be four PA power by four times PB power by three. It's gonna be like this. The PB is going to sini. So it's gonna be three PB uh, power by three power by three. We can cross this. Cross this. PA power by five. PA power by five. PA power by five. Cross this, cross this. So 
Now b equal to 4. Now how to convert this? To convert this, we just gonna put it into the equation. So every so for the a, the for so for the elasticity of a, every one percent rise in in price price of price of a that that will be two percent drop in demand because the analysis that we got is is actually a demand so for the newbie it's going to be like this but instead of uh, two percent it's going to be four percent like that uh, so if we're gonna write, it's gonna be every one percent rise in price. There will be four percent drop in demand. Okay, so this is the way how to, you will find the uh, the elasticity of A and B. Next, we are gonna find the cost elasticity of A and B. Okay, let's continue. So now we're gonna find the relationship between the K and the KB. Uh, so we have used these two. Now we're gonna use these two. The way we're gonna put into the equation it's gonna be like I have told you in the early of this video. So we're gonna put it on PB per KA which is this uh, so it's gonna be PA uh, power by 2 and PB power by 3 times this one this one is times 3 times PA power by 2 and PB power by 2 so like we can uh, like in the previous the PB right here is gonna be turned to sini so it's gonna be 2 it's going to be 2, this is PB power by 2, cross this, cross this, this is PA power by 2, power by 2. So the null AB is equal to 3. And then the P, and then this uh, for the null BA is going to be PA per, it's going to be KB. The KB is PA power by 5 times PB power by 4. Now what we will do to it is going to be like this one, which is times this one. This one is times 5, B A power by 4 and B B power by 4. It's gonna be like the previous one, it's uh, P A gonna be go to here, so it's gonna be A power by 4, this is P A power by 4, so we can cross this one, and then this is P B power by 4, this is P B power by 4. So cross this 2 and then the null B A equal to 5. Now we just need to conclude. How to conclude is that so since null a b and null b a is more than zero, the the relationship between uh, good a and good b is gonna be substitution. Like that. So uh, so uh, but if somehow the a and b is less than zero, it's gonna be momentum. But this time the the cross relationship of a and b is more than zero since both of them is more than zero so the realization of, of both of them is going to be substitution that's all thank you assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh so let's start assalamualaikum assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh hello everyone uh, my name is Muhammad Farah Al Farouk. You can call me Faras. You can call me Faras. My names are here. One four zero one two two four four five and six. I'm from class ICT two. 
Faculty of Economy and Business. So as for today, I will be presenting and teaching about the Lagrange method. Then as you guys have learned in the few previous material, we studied about optimization method. And now we are going to learn about Lagrange this time. Okay. Okay. So Lagrange is one of the methods that can be used in optimization in the and it is called as Lagrange multiplier method. The Lagrange me multiplier method, also known as Lagrange multipliers, was first introduced by Joseph Louis de Lagrange. He lived from 1736 to 1813. So the Lagrange multiplier method is a technique for maximizing or minimizing a function of several variables. With lambda being the Lagrange multiplier. So this is lambda. The Lagrange multiplier method can also be extended to solve problems that involve more than one requirement for or constraint or constraint. The objective for this method can be a linear function or maybe in the form of nonlinear function. While the constraints in the form of equation are constrained with numbers are exactly the same, meaning no more or no less, and what has been determined. So this is how you use Lagrange method to find the maximum and minimum and the minimum. It is also known as the function with the goal or objective to get an objective function. And so the function is z was function of x and y and then z equals to equals to c where the c is the constant therefore our first step is going to be we can find we can write a new function we can write a new function which is called the step function how do we find it? So z equals to function x plus lambda where it's constant minus t equals to function. So the Lagrange function is the objective function and the constraint function that multiplied by the lambda variable. Thus, this function is now considered to have three independent uh, variables. As you can see, it's the x, y, and also the lambda.
okay so what is the variable lambda so for a uh, lambda variable is something that represents something and are referred to referred as defaults to get like range multipliers so this uh, obtains the value of of the storage general values from this function we then must find the first partial derivatives for its of this variable and then each of these results is equated to zero is equated to zero thus we can write it like this So z x equals to push x minus lambda g x equals to zero. So the first partial derivative for the z y is equals to Constraint minus G X go by. As you guys can see now the partial 
partial derivative is surrounding around the lambda function. I mean the Lagrange function. The st stationary value of the Lagrange function will definitely meet requirements for the equation of the properties. So from all of this equation, we can find all the critical points, like the critical values of x, y, using the the elimination method for the Kramers rule. Then we found this. We are going to determine whether it is maximum, whether it is, whether it does have the maximum or minimum value. We need to find the second derivative value. Down is that. Okay, guys. So coming back from several technical issue before, I'm going to continue for this subject. I mean, Lagrange method. Okay, next we will move into the Hessian determinant, Hessian determinant, which we can you can draw it like this. H close the bracket equals to U R G X. G Y equals here Z X S and Z Y Y. Sorry, wait. Here Z X Y Z Y X maybe or maybe we can make it simple here you are plus g x times g x y times g y and then we plus g y times z y x and then times it again with the x minus it. Then under it we are going to work on the g uh g y times c times plus Bracket zero and then plus it again with z y y is g x times g x close the bracket <laughs> or you guys can make it simple or simplifying it a little bit more like here x times g x y times g y plus the bracket and then minus it with g y square g x x Minus T Z Y Y 
then we finally found it. If the limitation determinant is on the objective function, R and R more than the If it is more than, then it is maximum relative. But if it is uh, less than, then we, it is a uh, minimum. Okay, so next we will substitute the x and y values in this to get the maximum value. Or this x. Therefore, there are nine steps after my explanation for this optimization. And then we will be moving into the practice question. Okay, so practice question. Wait, we'll delete this first. Okay. Find the maximum or minimum value of the function C equals to twelve x y minus x three y perfect where the constraint function is x plus y equals to sixteen. Oh sh sorry. Then we'll find the Lagrange function from this. Make the Lagrange function. Therefore, is twelve x y minus x quadrat minus three y quadrat times sixteen minus x and minus y. Okay, so this is the first step. Moving to step two. Then we will find the derivative partial derivative. The first one. Now let's do the zx first. Zx equals to 12x minus 2x minus equals to 0. The next one is zy. We need to find the y first and then we will change it like this. 12y minus 9y is x I mean lambda equals to 0. So for the lambda is here, 15 minus x minus y equals to 0. Okay, so that is, f that is for the... Then for the th uh, third step, we will use the elimination method to find We will find the first partial derivative first. So z x oh sorry z z x equals to y minus the y minus lambda equals zero. So z y equals to twelve x minus six y. 
lambda equals to zero and then we will eliminate one one of them using this okay so you find it then y minus x the lambda is gone okay so for this result we will also uh, elimination it with the first derivative for the lambda wait wait this z lambda equals to 16 minus x minus y equals to 0 then we can times it with 14 And the result is 0 plus 32, yeah, y equals to 4 for 32. to seven therefore after we found the y which is here seven we we'll can put it in the constant function which is x plus y equals to 16 which is x is equals to 16 minus 7 and then we will find it is 9 and we found the point of x is 9 and uh, y is 7 And then we'll put this in the partial derivative equation. It's just move it to here. Uh, here and here. Which then we can find minus times seven. Oh, sorry. Minus two times minus lambda equals to zero. 34 which we found the answer is 66 then the lambda is here okay then after this we continue to the fourth step We'll find if the z value is maximum or minimum. Step then if we put it in here, c x x equals to minus then z y y equals to minus six y x equals to 12 g x sorry equals to 1 then g y equals to 1 as well <coughs> then we move again to the step 5 wait Then we move to the limitation determinant, which is again h here equals to zero. We put it one by one. One, one, one. Here's minus two, minus six. Here, 12. 
and here is the Then we found is that zero plus twelve minus min minus two plus zero minus six and then equals to thirty two is more than zero. Then we found that Z is maximum. Okay. It's maximum since it is more than zero. This is the uh, this is the step six. Moving to the seventh step to find the z value, we need to substitute the x, y, and z. The z maximum is equals to. Of x y minus x square three. So twelve seven minus nine quadrat. I mean square. Oh, it. The constraint function is actually not needed. I'm sorry. So it is 56 minus 81 minus 147 equals to 528. Moving to the x step. Since the lambda is 66, as we found here, here, 66. Then, if the constraint, so this means that if uh, the constraint changes by one unit, then we can conclude that the objective will move by 66 unit. This is the meaning of the lambda 66. Okay, I guess this that is it. this is it. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. That's all from me. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, hello, my name is Abu Raman Bejari and I'm here to talk about differential partial. Uh, what is the differential partial or when do we when do we use it as where we have a function that has more than one variable? We use it when we have two variables, like this function, is that function is long x, y, y is what? Like this, regularly, uh, when well, we do differential, just do it like this uh, differential dz. We just do it like this, and because we have two variables, so we need to do it one. So we use differential partial the y this, because uh, we cannot mix it. Uh, there, this is there. This is uh there are uh, yes uh two different variables, so we cannot just mix it. Uh, in mathematics. Uh, I learn we need to do it in a straight line. We can just mix this two because these are uh, two different variables. And after we do this, we, we do differential total because we need to search for the z function. Right? The name is differential total. Lambang, uh, is HD. I can add a whole other English name for it. So I guess the function is like this. But because we just do one by one, the, the differential partial, we don't use like this. We use dot. Yeah, I'm sure it's that. So we use dot like this one. Do x to d. Do x to times with d. Is d in here. 
dx. And the other one is do z again and do y times dy base. Okay, this is the differential over. So after this, maybe we do the example. So I don't really know how to explain it. Then. Maybe the sum of one or and five. Example. The first one we need want to do maybe example. First one. Oh, sorry, maybe we use black hard to see. Number one is number one. So x plus seven x y minus two y. We have a function, two function. So this is z function or the f again in here x and y. I forgot to write characters. So what we must do is write again the z function is equal to x seven x y minus two. So remember, because this is have two different variable, we need to do it twice. The do z and uh, do, do x and do y. The first one is the the x first. Maybe we we need to do the x first. We use do because it is one by one. The first one is because z is the vari two variable. We separate it. So separate it was like this. Separate it. And this and do x, do z and do y. We don't use d. Separate it. The first one is do z. And oh yeah. So what we must search is the one we want to accept this. So the other one is y, right? Why? Yeah. We just look at it as like a set, a constant, or just a number. So like this, x third, we have it as third plus seven. The x is one, and this is y, right? So, uh, we just look at it as, as it is a number. So it's y, and x is one times one. This minus, uh, this is two y. The, we, this in here we don't have x so we just say it as a zero so because this don't have x this is don't don't have x and here we have x right so yeah this is again try x uh, plus seven y this is the finish for the the x we do it one more time or right. and the y and let's click sorry so no, I spoke. Ah, this. Sorry for the bad quality. Uh, we look at uh, this again. The first one we don't have, don't have y. Here we don't have y. So we skip it. There is no x. No, there is no y in here. Like if the other one were in those that do x in two y third minus two y, but have x so we just write it as a zero we do it again as we write x third as a zero plus seven like here and seven x y we write it as x as a constant or, or as just a just as a number seven x y is one minus one minus times one here two minus y third is two times third right so this is seven x minus six y quarter like this and this is the example for the first maybe another one for the second for the second example we have a function maybe we use that function again but in here we don't have x x and y we have y one and y two this this is seems same but this it is just different as the y f one and two right here you see that care f one and two if they look the same but they still have the different so it's still different they are the different variables still the same the still different variables so what do we do again we separate it so the other the z and the y but we write it as the y1. Oh, but the function, I forgot the, 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 the,
for it is four one quarter plus four y one and y two and minus five y yeah that's it so what we what do we do is the same right? as the first we do we do it one by one so no i can do z and do the first variable is the y1 so see it the four y1 this is two so four times one quadrat is one yes i guess four times one we do this and as a constant, we, we say the one where, where is different variable as a constant. We start for y1, so the y2 in here, just add it, minus y1, again, times 1 minus 5 in here, 5. So in here is 3, y2, and in here is 2 again. Click it. So, here again, for plus for y2 minus 15. Finish for the z and the y1. We do the other one. Do z again and do y2. We see again in, in here for the y2. We don't have y2 in here, so we write it as a 0 plus. So we write it as for y1 as y1 is a, as a constant times oh yeah sorry uh the the y1 this is I have a I forgot, I forgot. so we do back to uh, we go back to the y1 in here so this one the five y is is wrong so this is we search for y1 but I found the y2. So it's wrong. Uh, so just this, right? Uh, so just this, this one. And it's the right one. And bottom. Oh yeah, this is wrong. So the finish one and the finish conclusion is this is and oh, we do again. <laughs> Sorry for the inconvenience. So we do the z and the y two. This okay. We look at this zero and then y2 here or y right y1 as a constant after that y2 times the differential is one minus five times ray y2 yes do you guess it i'm sorry there's the top of y minus 15 uh, this is the finish so if you do this where the simon want you wants you uh, or need you to search for the x and the y we do this all of it the y the y the x this one the y the x the uh, x the z the x the z the y a different function we are like this it's what the solve what the assignment asks you to do so when the assignment want you to the differential total like this one differential total so we just enter the result where we just insert insert the result to the to this function so the first the first example we do right we want to search for the differential hmm to search for the differential so just write it as this differential total this is the low then the x times the z x times x plus the z and the y times the y this okay uh, what do we do we just insert the result uh so for the z we have x quadrat and plus 7y and we have this so this 3x plus 7y we need this with the kurung all right plus the z and open x and minus minus 6y quadrat this i'm just this is the differential total 
what is the difference for local for the example number one for the example number two it's the same uh, this function we need to uh, still z so z right because we use y1 so this is the, the y1 times the y1 this times the z the bottom is the y2 times the y2 it's not the it's b y2 we insert it we insert the vessel for the example number one what is it a uh, port plus or y2 plus four y2 yeah, like this and um, times the y1 plus the z and the y2 the result is for y and 15 for y minus 515 y2 the it's not the it's the y so this is the total it is a differential total for the example number one so maybe we do the last example maybe you don't see wait wait maybe sorry sorry we do the last one the last example it's still the same but we search for the function x the variable is x and Z. We have OS X third plus five Z third again minus for X two Z minus three X Z again plus six but this is long but you see there are the there there are still the same variable x and z so if there is still if you say the same assignment or the same pass like this or much more long if there are there is still the same variable you can still do it with differential partial so we do it this uh, again do the y and do x why don't we use do z again because uh, the name of the function is y, so we do it like the y. So let's do a call to we see here fx, so 3x that was in here, z, so we don't we don't have x in here, so we have it as zero minus we have z here, we have x here, so when we have x and we have z. And Z, we write it as a constant. When X2 minus times 1, the is times 1, for X, because it's X, you see, for X and Z. Oh, sorry. So here, 3X and Z, if this is Z, <laughs> we write it that way again. X, Z, we have X still. Oh, this is X squared, so X. Quadrat is just still x, right? Um, we have x2 in here, so we write it as this x for z, and this is x for z, this x. Like that, this, uh, we did again, and this is 3, because we have 3, it is a constant, this is times 1. And the last one is plus. There are no more zero, number x, so write it as zero and minus zero. We see it. Okay. So minus three x minus two plus minus so minus four that x minus three that. And the last one is zero zero. And this is the, the final for the y box. We do once more for the, the z, so the y and the z equal to we see the function that have z in there, so zero again plus here we have z, but x in here, so write it as a constant for x times y times is times we have z. So the difference is, differential is one minus 
you see here we have z for x we write x as a constant z we have z in here the last one we have z in so six times one the last one is seven but then have z so we write it as a zero again Good. this is minus four x but minus again three x and z plus six this is the final for the y uh, for the z so that is all from me sorry for a for a, if i have difficulties uh explain it maybe i don't really do it often and thank you for listening and so, sorry again if you can't really see clearly for the answer but this is all of this is all of answer if you want just comment comment below so if you want the actual answer where you can see it thank you again and see you Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Ifki Rafi, and today I'm going to explain about the about today's topic, and it's about uh matrix. And let's begin with the basics. What is matrix? In simple terms, a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers and elements arranged in a rows and columns. It's like a mathematical grid that allows us to organize and manipulate data. And Today, I'm going to show you a question example. For instance, 3, 1, uh, 9, 4 here, plus 5, 2, 6, 3. And it's pretty simple. All you have to do is to... 3 plus 5 equals 8, and uh, 1 plus 2 equals 3, 9 plus 6 equals 15, and 4 plus, 4 plus 3 equals 7. Yeah. It's pretty simple. And I have another, I have another, uh, Question example, but this time is a bit different. So, for this, I'm gonna draw a line for each of these columns and rows. Like this one goes like, uh, in a row, and this one goes like in a column. So, so, in this question, we have to like, um multiply it uh, for example the first column this is like two by two right both of them so we have to like uh for example like the first column here like five five times five 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 times three is 15 and Six, six times one is six, and still in the first column, but in the second row right here, is nine. Nine times five is forty-five. Plus, uh, six times four. Six times four is twenty-four. And we're gonna count the second column now, uh, which is a uh, same like this like here. Two times three is six. Six plus uh three times three times one is three and Again, but th this time is this for the second column. Two, two times nine is eighteen. 
plus uh, 4 times 3, 4 times 3 is 12. Here. And after all of that, we just got to like uh, count this all up. Like, uh, fifteen. Uh, plus six is twenty one. And uh, forty forty five plus twenty four, I believe twenty four is sixty nine. Sixty nine. Sixty nine. Sixty nine. And. Uh, six plus three is nine, and eighteen. Eighteen plus twelve is thirty, I believe. Now, and then after all of this, we just got have to count this all up. Twenty, twenty one plus. 16, 69 plus 9 plus 30 equals 129. Now we are moving on to the grammar method, which I'm about to explain as uh, the best as I can. Here, I'm gonna erase out this first. I'm gonna write down the example of grammar method. For example, here, here. Uh, one, four, minus two, uh, three, two, and three, two, and two, three. Here, this time, uh, here, x one, x two. X three. So, in the Kramer method, uh, it's pretty simple. You have to just like, uh, the multiply like by this like here what I joined. So, one times two times two and so on. But the thing is, uh, there's no like a number here. So. So we just have to take the first two columns, two columns, one, three, two, and four, two, three. Let's see, just one, three, two, four, four, two, three. So now that it's done, we can just like here, the multiply like this and same goes for the other side and four one to the left and here and until two 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 right and left i'm gonna show you a question example i'm gonna erase this first Okay, now the question about to show here i'm gonna write it right now uh two one two three two one and two three two so now we're going to multiply them 
two two times two is four, four times two is eight, four times two is eight. So we put it here and plus one plus one. There is no the columns yet, so we're going to have have to add the the first two columns. Two, three, two, one, two, three. And so um one one multiply one is one multiplied by two is two plus again one more time two three is six six uh multiply by two times two times three is six six times three is eighteen. Now for the left side, to the left. One plus, uh, one plus two. One times three is three. Three times two is six. Plus two. Uh, two, two times one is two. Two is six again. Plus, plus one. Two times two is four. Four times two is eight. I forgot to add a minus here, and this was supposed to be a minus. The 18 was supposed to be minus, and the 8 is minus 2. I'm going to add this in. Now, after that, we count all of them. This here and here. Uh, 8 plus 2 is 10. 8, 10 plus 18 is 28. Um, Six plus six is uh, twelve, and twelve plus eight is twenty. Now, if we this is not supposed to be plus, it's supposed to be minus right here. So after we count a lot, this is supposed to be twenty eight. This was twenty eight, and this was twenty, meaning that twenty eight minus twenty is eight. Now, I have another question example. Uh, this one is like related to this question right here. So I'm gonna erase this, all of this first. Take a second. For the second question is that I've made myself is one, three, three for the first row, and the second row is three, ten, and two, and three for the third row is three, twelve, and two. So it's the same as last time. Uh we have to like multiply it uh the, the right the right to the right for this in this area the right and same we have to take the first two column out out to here one three three and three ten twelve okay now if we um multiply it again uh one time one times ten is ten uh, 10 times 2 is 20, 20 plus uh, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 times 3 is 18, 18 and, uh, sorry, uh, here I'm, I, I will make it up first and then 3 times 3 is 9 and 9 times 12 is 108 108 108 and and for the to the to the left here is going to be 3 3 times 3 is 9 9 times 2 is 18 plus uh 
I'm going to mark it up again. Uh, 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times is 4. Uh, uh, wait. One, oh, it's 2. I mean 12. Uh, my mistake. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 12 is 18. Uh, wait. No. It's uh, 20, 24. 24. It's 24. It's 24. Plus, plus, uh, what was it again? Uh, it was three times 10 is 30, 30, 30 times three is 90. 90 minus, this was supposed to be minus two. I forgot to mark that up. I'm sorry, this is a bit messy, so it's hard. It's kind of hard to, kind of hard to go with the mouse. So, Continuing, so 20 plus 18 plus uh, minus one, 108 is one, 108 and 18 uh, plus 24 plus 90. So uh, 20 plus 18 plus 108 is uh, equals well, 146 and 18 uh, plus 24 plus 90 equals 132. So if we count that up and uh, minus it, so it will be minus 14. So why, do, why did I say it's related to the first question is that we will uh, divide it uh, so divided and the uh, last it was like this a a a two and a one for this let's call this a one so the last the last uh answer was minus eight I believe. Yeah, it was. I think it was minus eight, and the second was minus fourteen. So we will divide it. Uh, eight divided by fourteen equals equals one point seventy five. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Ifki Rafi, and today I'm going to explain about the about today's topic, and it's about uh matrix. And let's begin with the basics. What is matrix? In simple terms, a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers and elements arranged in a rows and columns. It's like a mathematical grid that allows us to organize and manipulate data. And Today, I'm going to show you a question example. For instance, 3, 1, uh, 9, 4 here, plus 5, 2, 6, 3. And it's pretty simple. All you have to do is to... 3 plus 5 equals 8, and uh, 1 plus 2 equals 3, 9 plus 6 equals 15, and 4 plus, 4 plus 3 equals 7. Yeah, it's pretty simple. And I have another, I have another, uh, question example, but this time it's a bit different. So for this, I'm going to draw a line for each of these columns and rows. Like this one goes like uh, in a row and this one goes like in a column. So, so in this question, we have to like, um, multiply it 
uh, for example, the first column, this is like two by two, right? Both of them. So we have to like, uh, for example, like the first column here, like five, five times five, five, five times three is 15. And six, six times one is six. And still in the first column, but in the second row right here is nine, nine times five is 45 plus uh, six times four, six times four is 24. And we're gonna count the second column now, uh, which is uh, same, like this like here. Two times three is six, six plus uh, three times, Three times one is three, and again, but th this time is this for the second column. Two, two times nine is eighteen. Plus, uh, four times three, four times three is twelve. Here, and. After all of that, we just got to like uh count this all up. Like uh fifteen uh plus six it is twenty one. And uh forty forty five plus twenty four I believe twenty four is 69, 69, 69, 69, and uh, 6 plus 3 is 9, and 18, 18 plus 12 is 30, I believe. Now. And then after all of this, we just got have to count this all up. 20, 21 plus 16, 29 plus 9 plus 30 equals 129. Now we are moving on to the grammar method which I'm about to explain as uh, the best as I can. Here, I'm gonna erase all of this first. I'm gonna write down the example of grammar method. For example, here, here. Uh, one, four minus two, uh, three, two, and three, two, and two, three. Here, this time, uh, here, x one, x two, x three. In the grammar method, uh, it's pretty simple. You have to just like, uh, the multiply like by this like here what I drawing so, one times two times two and so on. But the thing is, uh, there's no like, 
a number here so so we just have to take the first two columns two columns one three two and four two three Let's see just one three two four four two three so now that it's done we can just like here the multiply like this and same goes for the other side and four one to the left and here and until two 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 right and left i'm gonna show you a question example i'm gonna raise this first Okay, now the question about to show here i'm gonna write it right now uh two one two three two one and two three two so now we're going to multiply them Two, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 2 is 8, so we put it here, and plus 1 plus 1, there is no the columns yet, so we're going to have, have to add the, the first two columns, 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, and so... Um, one, one multiply one is one multiplied by two is two plus again one more time two three is six six uh multiply by two times two times three is six six times three is eighteen. Now for the left side, to the left. One plus, uh, one plus two. One times three is three. Three times two is six. Plus two. Uh, two, two times one is two. Two is six again. Plus, plus one. Two times two is four. Four times two is eight. I forgot to add a minus here, and this was supposed to be a minus. The 18 was supposed to be minus, and the 8 is minus 2. I'm going to add this in. Now, after that, we count all of them. This here and here. Uh, 8 plus 2 is 10. 10 plus 18 is 28. Um, Six plus six is uh, twelve, and twelve plus eight is twenty. Now, if we this is not supposed to be plus, it's supposed to be minus right here. So after we count a lot, this is supposed to be twenty eight. This was twenty eight, and this was twenty, meaning that twenty eight minus twenty is eight. Now, I have another question example. Uh, this one is like related to this question right here. So I'm going to erase this, all of this first. Take a second. For the second question is that I've made myself is one, three, three for the first row, and the second row is three, ten, and two, 
and three for the third row is three, twelve, and two. So it's the same as last time. Uh, we have to like multiply it. Uh, the the right the right to the right for this in this area, to the right, and same. We have to take the first two column out out to here. One, three, three, and three, ten, twelve. Okay. Now if we um multiply it again, uh one time one times ten is ten. Uh ten times two is twenty. Twenty plus uh three times two is six. Six times three is eighteen. Eighteen and uh sorry. Uh here I'm I, I will micro up first and then three times three is nine and nine times twelve is one hundred and eight. One hundred and eight. One hundred and eight. And and for the to the right to the left here is going to be Three, three times three is nine. Nine times two is eighteen. Plus, uh, I'm gonna mark it up again. Uh, one times two is two. Two times is four. Uh, uh, wait, one, oh, wait, two. I mean twelve. Uh, my mistake. One times two is two. Two times. 12 is 18. Oh, wait, no, it's uh, 20, 24, 24, it's 24. It's 24 plus, plus, uh, what was it again? Uh, it was three times 10, it's 30, 30, 30 times three is 90. 90 minus, this was supposed to be minus two. I forgot to mark that up. I'm sorry, this is a bit messy, so it's hard. It's kind of hard to kind of hard to go with the mouse. So continuing. So 20 plus 18 plus uh minus one one oh eight is one one oh eight and eighteen. Uh, plus twenty four, plus ninety. So uh, twenty plus eighteen plus one oh eight is e uh, equals well, one forty six and eighteen uh plus twenty four plus ninety equals one thirty two. So if we count that up and uh minus it, so it will be minus 14 so why do why did i say it's related to the first question is that we will uh, divide it uh so divide it and the uh, last it was like this eight a a two and a one for this let's call this a one so the last, the last uh answer was minus eight, I believe. Yeah, it was. I think it was minus eight, and the second was minus fourteen. So we will divide it. Uh, eight divide by fourteen equals. Equals one point seventy five. 